welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Gabby and today I'm going to be telling you about all of the books that I read in the month of August. In the month of August, I started reading graphic novels. I posted on my Instagram story at the beginning of the month asking for graphic novel recommendations and you guys did not disappoint. You gave me some of the best graphic novels ever. <laughs> And that's coming from somebody who hasn't read any at all. But I did end up rating them all five stars. I don't know how to really rate graphic novels yet, but all of them were five stars for me. And I don't know if I keep reading graphic novels, if I were to change the ratings on these. All were really, really good reads to me. The thing I love most about graphic novels, I think, is because all of the illustrations are amazing and they're fast reads. They kind of help you get out of a slump. They're there in place when you are in a slump and you need something quick to read to revive you. So that is what I did this August because I was kind of in a slump and it was actually a really good reading month for me. I just, I started getting really in the mood for spooky books and fall, but I was still trying to read my beachy reads and going back to school and graphic novels are what got me through that slump. But without further ado, let me tell you about the graphic novels that I read in the month of August. The first one, like all the other ones, was a five star read. And that one is The OK Witch by Emma Steinkellner. This one was so cute. It is about a girl named Moth who finds out that she's different than all of her other friends and that her mom has been keeping a secret from her and that she's actually a witch. And it goes through her learning her abilities and figuring out, you know, where she wants to be or who she wants to be. And it is just such a cute story. The illustrations in this one are really, really good. And honestly, the illustrations in all of the graphic novels I read, but graphic novels in general, I feel like are amazing. And it's what I love the most about them. I love just staring at the pictures and picking up on all of the details of them. So this one was a really good read to get you into the mood for all of the witchy books that come through September and October. So if you haven't picked this one up and you enjoy graphic novels, I highly suggest this as well as all the other ones I'm going to talk about. This one is great if you enjoy books about witchy things and it is just the perfect cozy little graphic novel. All right, I know I said the last one was like the perfect cozy little graphic novel, but I feel like all of these are, especially this next one, which is Garlic and the Vampire by Brie Polson. This one, guys, I loved so much. I ordered this one from Amazon and it arrived during the vlog that I was doing. So I ended up picking this one up and reading it right away. I could not wait. This is about our friend Garlic and she is tending to her garden. It's what she loves to do the most. When one day her friends at her garden find out that there is a vampire that is living in town and they're trying to figure out how they can find out the vampire's motive and one of the people at the garden suggests that Garlic goes and finds out what he's doing. Garlic is very shy and timid and very scared of things, but with the support of her best friend Carrot, she's able to go out and find this vampire and ask him what he wants and what he's doing there. This is just such a cute graphic novel. It talks about being brave and conquering your fears and it is just very cute. I loved the friendship in this one. The illustrations again are very cute and interesting. Um, Carrot and Garlic are just adorable. This one you should definitely pick up. It is perfect for the time of September to get you in that cozy mood. And I believe in October the second one is coming out, which is Garlic and the Witch. So I need to pre-order that one and read that one because I really, really enjoyed this one. If the other two aren't sparking your interest in graphic novels, then this one definitely will put you right in the middle of fall mode. It's going to make you want to light every pumpkin candle you have. It's going to make you want to go to Dunkin' or Starbucks and get your pumpkin, ice cream, cold brew, whatever the heck you get. This book is going to make you want to get that. And that is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. But this was the first graphic novel that made me want to bust out all of my fall decorations. <laughs> this one is about... Josie and Deja and they are seniors. They're working their last year at this pumpkin patch together before they head off to college. And they're super bummed because they started to be best friends while working this. They decide 
you know, this is our last year working this together. We need to make this the best year ever. Asia is also trying to help Josie spark a romance with another person at the pumpkin patch. And I don't know. I don't know if it works or not, but this one was so cute. The illustrations are again, amazing i really really enjoyed them it is such a fast-paced cute cozy read and like i said if you want all the fall feels pumpkin spice and everything nice then pick up pumpkin heads this graphic novel i read is a little bit of a longer graphic novel and that one is nimona by noelle stevenson I talked about this one as well in another one of my vlogs but this one talked about friendship and not leaving someone behind and differences between people and I really really enjoyed this one um this is about a girl named Nimona and she is working along Lord Blackheart and they are trying to wreak havoc basically they're trying to prove to the kingdom that Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin and his buddies at the institution in law enforcement and heroics just aren't the heroes everyone thinks they are I enjoyed this one I feel like I didn't enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed the other ones but this one still was good I did get kind of confused at a point in this but I think it's because I was reading it so fast that I kind of skipped some things but again the colors and the illustrations in graphic novels just make me so happy and I really enjoyed this one. This one was as well a five star read. The last two graphic novels I have make me really happy <laughs> and this is the first graphic novel that I read. It is also a series and the third one comes out really soon. That is none other than Laura Olympus volume one as well as volume two which shout out to Kendall from Bookphoria for getting me volume two. She knew how much I love volume one and she ended up picking this one up for me but these were amazing. If you didn't know this is a Hades and Persephone's retelling um, in graphic novel form which is amazing and I loved it. All I'm gonna say is that you need to pick them up because what are you doing? if you're not. I mean, I know I didn't for the longest time, but now that I did, I'm going to judge everybody who doesn't. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not, but I am going to judge you if you don't pick them up. <laughs> Again, kidding. The next genre I'm going to talk about is my fiction or romance books that I read in the month of August. The first romance that I read was The Beach Trap by Allie Brady. This one was a very fast paced romance for me. I read this while I was at the beach, which I think made it even better. Um, this one, if you didn't know, is about two girls who go to summer camp one year and while they're there they find out that they are actually stepsisters. So they end up cutting off all of communication with each other and then a while down the road they find out that their dad passed away and leaves them a joint inheritance to this beach house. With that being said, one sister really wants to keep it. She thinks it's good for her lifestyle and her social media account, which is basically her job. Whereas the other sister could really use the money by selling it. So while they're there, they kind of argue about what to do. But while they're both there, they also spark a summer romance. This one was really good. I love the sister dynamic in it. I loved the enemies to best friends kind of trope and I also like that there was a romance inside this novel. Only a 350 some page read which is honestly not that long of a read for me and so I, I got through it very quickly but if you need a good light-hearted summary romance I suggest picking this one up because I don't know if I said it already but this one was a five-star read for me. As I'm going through these I realize August was not a bad reading month for me at all. As all of the graphic novels that I read were five stars and most of the books that I read were either four or five stars. The next one was a thousand percent a five star for me and that is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I loved this one. Ugh. I have never really read a lot of books with like paranormal aspects to it and this one has that and it's a romance and there's not a lot of smut. And it was just amazing and you need to pick it up but i need to thank keisha for putting me on this book i heard her rave about this i heard Liv talk about this I heard so many good things about it so i was like i need to figure out what all of the hype is about so i picked it up and i will tell you the hype is real and i loved it i get it might not be for everyone i have seen some people rated a three star which why no <laughs> kidding but 
I did really enjoy this one. If you don't know, this is about a girl named Florence and Florence has seen ghosts since she was a younger girl. She ends up moving away from all of that, moving away from her family's funeral parlor and becomes a ghost writer um, until one day she finds out that her dad passes away. She goes home for the funeral and while she's there, she notices that her new editor is starting to show up. There is a romance that kind of sparks and this one is just really really good so if this is honestly the perfect romance for the upcoming spooky season because it has that paranormal aspect but it still has a romance so if you don't really enjoy thrillers and mysteries and you love romance but kind of want a romance that matches the fall aesthetics definitely pick this one up next one that i read is heart bones by colleen hoover i did read this one on my kindle this one was a four star for me. I really enjoyed the plot line of it. I like the relationship that's built throughout this book. I just loved all of the tropes that were in this book. The book does talk about addiction, so if that is a trigger warning for you, I definitely would look into that first. But I still really enjoyed this one. Colleen Hoover, like I said in other videos, is a hit or miss for me. Um, Verity is still my favorite book that I've read by her and the next one that I read was also a Colleen Hoover. This was a pick for my book club that I run and that is Hopeless. This one, I didn't enjoy it. I gave it a three star. I feel like it had potential. It was there. It wasn't the worst thing I read. However, I screwed up and I didn't look at the trigger warnings before reading this book and there is abuse in this book and it did not it didn't sit well with me. I didn't like it. <laughs> I had a really hard time getting through this book. It doesn't take a lot to please me with books and I'm starting to get a little pickier with them. I think it was just the the abuse aspect to this that made me give it a three stars because if that wasn't a trigger for me, I think I would have gave it like a four. I don't know. Well, you know, I might be lying because the way that the characters in this book cope with stressful things and aspects of life, I didn't enjoy. They could have used their words and instead they just did other actions that I just didn't like. I know there are people that really, really enjoy this one. However, I just really didn't and I don't think I'm going to be picking up the rest of the series. The three books that I'm going to talk about that I read are my thrillers and mysteries of August. The first one I loved, it was a five star, and that is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Loved it. This is a book that had a lot of mixed reviews, which is another reason why I wanted to pick it up so bad because I wanted to formulate my own opinion. And a lot of people said that they didn't enjoy the ending. However, the ending was my favorite freaking part. I'm going to just read the back of this book because I feel like it does an amazing job of describing what the story is about. But it says, Alicia Burdenson's life is seemingly perfect until one night when her husband Gabriel returns home late from work and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns a domestic tragedy into a mystery that captures the public imagination. And she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids at the Grove, a secure psychiatric unit in North London. Criminal psychologist Theo Faber is captivated by Alicia's story and jumps at the opportunity to work with her. His determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband will take him down a path more unexpected and more terrifying than he ever imagined. What? <laughs> that just sounds so good. If you haven't read this one, please, please, please give it a try. If you didn't enjoy this one, I'm so, so sorry that you did not because I loved this one. It was a five-star read. I would read it again. I want it to be a movie. I want it to be a TV show. I don't know, but I really enjoyed this one. I also really like this author's writing style. It was the first book that I read by him. I've received The Maidens in a book of the month box before, but I haven't picked it up yet. And now that I finally read The Silent Patient, I really want to pick up The Maidens probably in October. The next one was How to Survive Your Murder by Danielle Valentine. This was a four star read for me. I received this one from a raffle on Bookish Fur. This one is about a girl named Alice and she is the only witness of her sister Claire's murder. Um, and the day of the trial, Alice gets knocked out in the bathroom and they take her back to the night that her sister died. And they said that she can possibly change the results of what happened, but whatever she does on this night or whatever happens stays permanent. 
There are so many plot twists within this book and I actually really, really enjoyed it. The more that I'm thinking about it, I honestly don't know why it gave it a four stars. I should have given it a five star, but I really did enjoy this. I feel like I kind of got confused at like one part, but I did not see the ending coming at all. The plot twist was so unexpected. And I think it's because when I read a thriller mystery, I want to go in blind or I sit and I try to not figure anything out because if I sit there and I'm like, okay, who did it? I know that I'm going to probably pick up on the ending. So I just let myself enjoy the ride. I highly suggest picking this one up if you want a quick thriller mystery. Last physical book that I read was Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This is the second book that I read by this author. The first one I read was Rock, Paper, Scissors. This one, guys, was amazing. I rated this one a five star as well. This one, I was kind of nervous because a lot of people gave it a four, which I wasn't nervous that I wasn't going to like it. But a lot of people were able to pick up on the plot twist. And I was like, oh, dang, am I going to pick up on the plot twist? But guess what? I didn't. I didn't pick up on the plot twist at all. And I was messaging Keisha from a book like you. And I was like, I have so many theories and no theories at all at all at the same time because i felt like it could have been anybody if you didn't know this is about a girl named daisy who goes to her nana's secluded island for her 80th birthday while they're there the tide comes in and blocks them off for the rest of the world for like eight hours and nana ends up dying and then everybody starts dying one by one and they're trying to figure out who is doing this to them what is happening and they can't get off of the island or call for help until the tide goes back out this one was amazing the ending i just did not see coming it had paranormal aspects to it and creepy vibes it just was perfect for the spooky season and i was so happy that this one led me into the month of september because i could not ask for anything better it gave me the perfect spooky vibes and I just loved it a lot. So if you're looking for something to pick up with this spooky aspect to it, definitely look into this one. I love Alice Feeney's writing. Her writing makes you forget that you're reading or that you're not actually there. Like I felt like I was in the house watching this happen while reading this book. The last book I read in August was actually a book that I listened to on Scribd and that is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This one is an autobiography, which is something that I normally don't read, but I ended up listening to this one because I've seen a lot of people like it and I'm familiar with her. It's just amazing to me that like growing up, I used to enjoy these shows and I never realized how young they actually were or the things that these actors and actresses go through. This one broke my heart in many ways, but I am just so thankful that she decided to write a book and describe what she went through and share her life with us. A very vulnerable thing to do. And a four star, just because I'm not used to listening to books on Audible or like I never really read an autobiography, just kind of got lost at some ports. And that's not because of the author or the way the book was written. It's just because I would listen to it when I was doing other things and I wasn't solely focused on that. So those are the 13 books that I read in the month of August. Um, stay tuned for my September TBR. I have a lot of really good books that I'm excited to read in the month of September. I'm finally cracking out all my spooky thriller mysteries, which I do that all year round, but it makes me feel better when I do it in September and October. So friends, comment below and let me know what books you read in August were five star reads for you or what you plan to read in the month of September. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye friends.